All right, so we're here with Tao uh, and Jackie Michel, the Senior Product Manager over Release Management. Um, release is comprised of two groups, Release Management and Progressive Delivery. I am over um, Release Management and Ori Golowinski is over Progressive Delivery. When we look at the separation of what each of those cover, uh, release management is all about getting teams to effectively to, de to deploy um, really when and where in a traceable, secure manner. And this means that I have four main categories. This is release orchestration, which is the ability to plan and deploy code. Uh, some fun feature functionality for that would be our releases page, environments, uh, pages is the second category. This is our static site um, generator product. We have a bunch of templates that allow you to use GitLab pages with any static site generator. It's a really popular issue for people who are using GitLab. Um, release governance is the third category. This is where you use release evidence to track uh, all the things that are contained within any given deployment or release. Uh, this could be assets, packages, um, it's a snapshot of your, of your code. Release governance will expand into policy, um, potentially interlacing with compliance a little bit more. Uh, and then the last category in release management is secrets management. This is inclusive of CICD variables and uh, secrets that are in a pipeline but also SSH keys, um, any tokens that you may use as a part of your GitLab experience. It's really the only category that doesn't neatly fit within this deployment idea because it's a continuous um, kind of object that's used throughout GitLab. Progressive delivery, on the other hand, is all about the control and monitoring of deployments and this is seen in four different, I think five different categories right now. The first one is continuous delivery, which is being able to deploy um, as often as you, you would like to and deliver to your customers. Um, a part of that is being able to create a dynamic environment for reviewing your changes with review apps. This is related to and tangential to the testing um, verification uh, app work that James Heimbuck is doing. Then there's the incremental rollout feature functionality. This is kind of the bread and butter of progressive delivery. This is how we would promote things like advanced deployments, blue green, canary deployments, um, leveraging partial deployments to different environments. Really it's how we allow and enable customers to, to continuously deliver or deploy. Um, and then lastly, feature, fa feature flags, which is the, um, the ability to toggle um, changes on and off for a production environment. So for example, you'd add a feature flag to a feature that you wouldn't want to show up in production so your customers don't experience it. And then more, most recently, we added a feature called merge trains. And this is the ability to have a um, a train or a collection of merge requests get merged into master rather than merging each individual change um, independently. So does that kind of help describe the delineation between release management and progressive delivery? Yes. Um, one thing that you mentioned, um, that's called out there, continuous delivery. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so there's, there's always that distinction between continuous deployment and continuous delivery and you mentioned in the description of the objective is in an automated and safe way so is is continuous deployment part of that as well yeah so when we look at incremental rollout this is about deploying new production code so that's really your continuous deployment framework whereas continuous delivery is about building a zero touch um, software delivery model Okay, so in incremental rollout. Um, so that is automatically going out, but just, just in a very um, limited deployment. Okay. Okay, so that's where the automatic, uh, the continuous deployment happens. Okay. 